Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to module 6. Uh, we have uh, presented uh, so far, uh, the, the, we have given the formal derivation of the quantum adiabatic theory which uh, uh, assumes that the uh, let us say taking an example of a particle in one dimensional box, the box is expanding very slowly and if the box is expanding very slowly then at the initial time before the expansion started if it was in the nth non-degenerate discrete non-degenerate stationary state the particle if, if it was there then after the expansion the particle will remain in the nth non-degenerate stationary state of HT but the wave function accumulate two different phases and these two phases are the dynamical phase which uh, has to be included in the um, uh, in the wave function. So, the formal statement of quantum adiabatic theorem, we will write down the formal statement of the quantum adiabatic theorem. Under the quantum adiabatic theorem, the Hamiltonian of a quantum system, the Hamiltonian of a quantum system changes very slowly with time from an initial form which is H0 to a final form HT during which this adiabatic process occurs and as a result the quantum system the quantum system which was initially at t equals 0 or before the beginning of the process in the non-degenerate nth eigen state of H0. So, the quantum system which was present in the nth eigen state of H0 will remain will remain in the non-degenerate nth eigen state of HT because the final uh, Hamiltonian is now HT. This simply means that the ground state, what does it mean? It means that the ground state system will remain in the ground state in the ground state before and after the adiabatic change of the Hamiltonian. 
without making transition to the without making transition to excited state. So, ground state will remain in the ground state, but the wave function which was before psi n 0 in this case ground state. So, we consider ground state to be um, if, 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 if it was psi n 0 now the wave function would be psi n t that is the wave function, but it has now additional phase the phase is e to the power i gamma n t and e to the power i theta n t that is the difference. So, a wave function which was staying here now the wave function is this one after the adiabatic process has um, um, it, it is over immediately after the adiabatic process is over here this theta n is called dynamical phase and gamma n is called geometric phase. So, this is the uh, kind of summary of quantum adiabatic theory. Uh, the at time t equals 0 it was the wave function of the particle will be represented by psi n 0 at t equals t time after immediately after that process is turned off. Now, the wave function would be psi n t that is the stationary state wave function uh, obtained from h t, but in addition to that wave function I have now additional phase factor this phase factor now accumulated due to this adiabatic change the pro change of the process. So, the so the entire pictorial viewpoint is following let us assume that I have one box of le length L 2. So, if I have a box of length L 2 I know what is the wave function of that particle. Particle wave function will be given by psi n which is given by this it depends on L 2 distance. Now, I will consider a box which is starting from an expanding box starting from L 0 to L 2 this L 2 this is the static box the box is not expanding, but here the in this expanding box problem it is slowly expanding from L naught to L 2. Finally, I have uh, achieved this dimension L 2 which was present in the static box. So, then in that case the wave function immediately after the expansion for this expanding box will be this wave function which is coming from the static box wave function multiplied by two different phase factor these two phase factors are coming just due to the dynamical evolution of the box. If it was not dynamically evolving to uh, reach that uh, dimension we should have this static wave function the static wave function is given already the particle in the box, but because it is dynamically evolving due to that dynamical evolution the wave function the static wave function will come and it will be augmented or uh, um, multiplied by two different phase factor one phase factor is called dynamical phase factor another one is called geometric phase factor these two phase factors will be added um, to the wave function. Uh, uh, because of the dynamical evolution this non adiabatic uh, sorry adiabatic change of the box. So, this is the dynamical viewpoint of the entire theory which we have presented and the entire derivation is to get this expression final expression for the, uh, the for the wave function final wave function and uh, this th 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 there is no n here this is this is actually the state at at time at this time. So, 
So, we will go back to uh, our problem of one dimensional problem and we have seen that the wave function will be represented by this um, um, this entire wave function at time t will be represented by this and um, um, now we will explicitly calculate what would be the uh, expression for or values for this dynamical phase and the geometric phase for the given problem. The problem is that a box is expanding from L1 uh, bond dis, uh, uh, length to L2 length and um, at it, this is t equals 0 and this is at time t it has uh, up to time t it has expanded. And we will say that uh, we will assume that assume that my particle before the expansion it was in the ground state. So, the ground state wave function will be written like this way it would be square root of 2 by L sin pi x by L and uh, it was ground state that is why uh, it should be L 1. So, this was the wave function of the particle uh, before the expansion, but uh, the particle uh, the, the box has expanded from L 1 to L 2 and um, L 1 is the box length less than equals 0 just before the expansion started and L 2 is the length when it has expanded completely and immediately after the expansion this is the box length L 2. So, according to adiabatic theory the wave function at time t immediately after the uh, length has expanded to L 2 what is the wave function of the particle that is represented by psi 1 t that is the ground state wave function at time t and then its phase factors will be multiplied. So, we will we will explicitly see uh, how to get that. First, we will look at this theta 1 t how much is going to be theta 1 t will depend on this integration that we have seen and E 1 uh, the energy we know that it is going to be pi h cut square by 2 m L this is t dash square. So, any time so 0 to t this is the time interval we have the expansion time interval at any time is given within this interval is going to be t dash and that is the integration we have taken. So, uh, if this is the expression for the ground state wave function uh, ground state particle uh, the energy of the particle is given by this this is the instantaneous energy of the particle in the ground state then we will say that uh, we will assume that the, um, the expansion occurs at constant rate v that is d l d t is constant. And if d l d t is constant or d l d t dash is constant then one can write down d t dash equals d l by v that we can do. And what is l here? L is the instantaneous length. So, L has changed from L 1 to L 2 and any instantaneous length in between is going to be L. So, that is the uh, definition of this. So, what we can do is that this total time integration can be converted to spatial integration like this way 1 by h cut this uh, this rate of change and now it is going to be L 1 to L 2 then this integration is going to be pi square h cut square divided by 2 m 
L square DL. L is an instantaneous length in the interval L1 to L2. So, I have been able to convert this integration to in terms of L and if we do that then I will be able to integrate it very easily. I will be able to write down as minus pi square h cut by 2 m v uh, this is going to be l 1 to l 2 1 by l square d l which is nothing but pi pi square h cut by 2 m v 1 by l l 1 l 2 is pi square h cut divided by 2 m v 1 by l 2 minus 1 by l 1. So, we finally get this theta 1 t this value that is the dynamical phase which is accumulated by the wave function due to this dynamical evolution is going to be pi square h cut by 2 m v 1 by l 2 minus 1 by l 1. So, we have got one uh, phase factor for the expanding one dimensional box problem. Next we will look at the geometric, uh, geometric phase. In the geometric phase we have this expression and uh, um, uh, a here uh, psi 1 t dash psi 1 time dependent because it is the psi 1 l it is actually depends on l that is why and l is time dependent that is why psi is time dependent. So, uh, one can write down this uh, derivative as follows psi 1 L. Again we are converting this expression in terms of L. So, if we do that then I will be able to write down I then this is going to be L 1 to L 2 integration psi 1 psi 1 with respect to L then d L with respect to the, this, this we can insert here and we can convert this one to this. So, we know that the psi 1 is nothing but square root of 2 by L sin pi x by L at, at any instant of length L. So, L we said that this is L 1, this is L 2 at any instant of time the length of the box is given by L in between these two interval. So, that is given by this the wave function ground state wave function will be given by this. So, if I have this ground state wave function like this then I will be able to get the um, derivative with respect to L because that is derivative what I need here it is going to be now uh, derivative with respect to L is going to be square root of 2 by L sin pi x by L. This is going to be square root of 2 minus 1 by 2 L to the power minus 3 by 2 sin pi x by L plus square root of 2 by L minus pi x by L square then cos pi x by L. So, we, 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 we get this first derivative with respect to L of this function and once we get the first derivative we will be able to 
because I have to multiply now psi 1. So, I if I if I want to find out psi 1 this partial derivative this product this product will give me 2 by L sin pi x by L multiplied by this entire function. I have to multiply the entire function which is square root of 2 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 L to the power minus 3 by 2 sin pi x by L plus square root of 2 by L minus pi x by L square then cos of pi x by L. So, if I if I multiply then finally what I get is going to be 1 by L square sin square pi x by L minus 2 pi x by L cube sin pi x by L multiplied by cos pi x by L. These two terms we we get and in the end we have to get the integration. So, this psi 1 this integration is nothing but 0 to L psi 1 psi 1. So, this is psi 1 star psi 1 dl dx because this ground state wave function is a real function. So, psi 1 star and psi 1 are equ equivalent they, they do not have the complex conjugate because they, they are real. So, what I get have to do now this entire thing has to be integrated 0 to L uh, uh, 0 to L then minus 1 by L square sin square pi x by L this is one term then another term is going to be uh, I put it here minus here there is another term another term is going to be 2 pi by L cube and this integration remember this is coordinate space integration. So, this is over x. So, this is going to be dx that is why we can take out this L uh, square term 0 to L. So, we can write down like this way and then we have 0 to L sin pi x by L and cos pi x by L dx. So, this is the integration we which we need to perform. So, we will perform it step by step. First, we will look at this integration the right uh, this is the first uh, integration. In order to do this first, first integration we will use trigonometric identity as cos 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sin square theta or minus 2 sin square theta equals cos 2 theta minus 1. We will use this one because in this part if you look at this part which is minus 1 by L square 0 to L sin square pi x by L we will make it like this way we will make multiply by 2 and then this is 2 this is dx. So, if we do that then this part can be written as cos 2 theta minus 1. So, we can write down this to be cos 2 theta minus 1. So, we will write down cos 2 pi x by L minus 1 dx. If we do that then I get minus uh, 
I get 1 by 2 L square. one by two l square zero two l cos two pi x by l minus one by two l um, square zero two l dx so this can be written as 1 by 2 L square sine 2 pi x by L divided by 2 pi by L 0 to L minus 1 by 2 L square x 0 to L. Now if x equals l then this becomes sin 2 pi sin 2 pi is going to be 0 and then when sin x equals 0 then also 0 so the entire term goes to 0 what i get finally is minus 1 by 2 l square l or in other words 1 by minus 1 by 2 l so this term we have an in ne we have neglected this negative term so this part is is giving me minus 1 by 2l on the other hand uh, sorry uh, not this part uh, we have included this negative sign here because this is this is negative so so this entire part is becoming minus 1 by 2L. The other integration, this integration we have to take a look at it. This integration we have already got that is minus 1 by 2L. Now we are looking at this integration. In order to do this integration, we will be able to write down 2 sin theta cos theta equals sin to theta. So, this part can be uh, rewritten as sin 2 theta. So, I will be able to write down 1 by 2 pi by L cube 0 to L um, see this, this 2 will be taken inside this is I have x then 2 sin pi x by L cos pi x by L dx that is the integration I have which is uh, which can be written as 2 sin theta. So, this 2 will be gone and this is going to be now 2 sin theta dx. And um, I will now multiply uh, this pi by L cube, I keep it as it is, then I multiply with this factor L by 2 pi, there is a reason why I am multiplying, then 0 to L, then I multiply x and then I write down minus 2 pi by L, then sin 2 pi x by L dx. The reason I am doing it because this part now, this entire part can be written as derivative of cos value. So, it is going to be d dx of cos 2 pi x by L. Now, I can integrate by parts integration by parts if I do that then I will be able to write down 1 by 2 L square then x cos 2 pi x by L 0 to L minus 
1 by 2L square 0 to L cos 2 pi x by L dx which is 1 by 2 L square L cos 2 pi minus 0 minus 1 by 2 L square sin 2 pi x by L 0 to L multiplied by L by 2 pi. So, what we see here is that this entire term uh, would be 0 for the limit we have set. So, that part uh, vanishes and as a result cos 2 pi is 1. So, finally, I get L by 2 L square which is nothing but 2 1 by 2 L. So, this part we have already got minus 1 by 2 L and this part we have we are getting the remaining part we are getting as plus 1 by 2 L. So, finally, what we get is that uh, this integration this value is becomes 0 and if this integration is becoming 0 then gamma 1 at time t is is given by 0 to uh, L 1 by L 2 this 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 is the limit and then this integration psi 1 L then dl this part becomes also 0. So, what we are seeing here is that uh, the geometric phase becomes 0 for an expanding box when the box is expanding from L1 to L2. But it, 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 it is accumulating dynamical phase but geometric phase becomes 0. So, uh, what we have uh, observed is summarized here the wave function initially the wave function was this finally the wave function would be this multiplied by e to the power i theta n t. Uh, there is theta 1 t because we started with the ground state wave function. So, it is going to be 1 theta 1 t and gamma 1 gamma vanishes. So, this is the final wave function after the expansion and theta 1 t is given by this expression. When we see this geometric phase to be 0, we can remember that any time if the wave function is real then the geometric phase after the uh, adiabatic expansion is going to be 0. That is another um, consequence of adiabatic theorem which, can, which we can prove actually, uh, but we will not do it uh, immediately. Uh, we have come to the end of this uh, uh, present module. Uh, in this module, we have given uh, uh, theories which can be used to solve analytically the TDAC time dependence Hollinger equation to explore the, um, the dynamics of a quantum system. We have presented time dependent perturbation theory wh where uh, we have uh, which can be used to uh, find out the dynamical evolution of a system. Time dependent perturbation theory will be very frequently used for light absorption, light emission and um, non radiative transition. Uh, in addition to this time dependent perturbation theory, there is another analytical approach which is available um, which is called uh, quantum adiabatic theory which we have presented in the light of expanding um, uh, one dimensional box. We will uh, end this session and we will meet again in the next module.